Nick. Hey, Gabby. Quick rosary before the shoot. Here? Right now? Yeah, why not? Um, yeah. Oh, you can follow my lead. Uh, okay. I believe in one God, God Father, Father the Almighty. Almighty. One God. Play it cool. Mumble along. She'll never know. And in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Son of God. The Son of the living God of us all incarnate? You don't know the Apostles' Creed, do you? Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, I... Well, hey, this is why we have phones. Hi, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Welcome to Catholic Central. Every Mass after the priest says... And now let us profess our faith. Catholics launch into a bunch of we believe statements. Where do these words come from? Why do Catholics do this? Isn't this a thing that cults do? Maybe the cults got the idea from us. Oh, no, no. Okay, it's not a cult thing. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to explain why. For the first few centuries of Christianity, Christians practiced in secret because they were persecuted. And not persecuted like the barista forgot to say Merry Christmas, but like an actual death sentence if you were caught. So there were a lot of different beliefs floating around in communities that didn't have much contact with each other. When Constantine elevated Christianity in the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, this became obvious. It was, and still is, the job of the bishops to discern what is orthodox, which is Greek for right belief. And in the Roman Empire, one of the roles of the emperor was to squash any heresies, which are any beliefs not in line with orthodoxy. You know, where's a good holy Roman emperor when you need one, right? Well, I just, I, I don't think those are going to be coming back. Oh, R.I.P. Anyway, one of the major ones at the time was Arianism. Which held that Jesus was a being created by God and more human than divine. So Constantine called for the First Council of Nicaea in 325 to make sure everyone was on the same page about what Christians actually should believe. The Council of Nicaea was the first ecumenical council, meaning that it involved all churches from the known world at that time. After some very spirited debates, the council produced the Nicaean Creed, the first attempt to define proper Christian belief for all Christians. The word creed comes from credo, which means I believe, and is the first word of the creed in Latin. It is still defining core Christian beliefs today, uniting all mainstream Christian denominations. The Apostles' Creed has a slightly different history. It has its origins in the 2nd century, but the version we know was likely put together in the 5th century. Traditionally, it was believed that each apostle contributed a line to it. Hence the name. But most scholars today agree that it's an expansion of the Roman symbol, which was the creed used for baptisms starting in the 2nd century. And it's still a summary of the apostles' faith, so they didn't have to rebrand it. We still use it for baptisms today. So, let's dive into what the creeds actually say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. This section emphasizes we believe in one God. Not in a million gods, or a council of demigods, or even one God with three heads. And Catholics believe that this one God created everything in the universe. Next, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. This section was written to specify a few things about Christ's nature. As we mentioned before, there were many competing theories about Jesus and whether he was divine, human, or both. So this part emphasizes that Christ is eternal, truly God, the same substance as God the Father. And that the reason he came to earth was for the salvation of all humanity. Next, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. You'll see people bowing here. That's because it honors the mystery of the Incarnation. That's the idea that Jesus, even though he was fully God, chose to become a creature with hair in weird places and body odor and occasional intestinal issues. Oh, gross. Okay, don't act like you're above it. Moving on. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. This section points to both the historical reality of Christ's sacrifice, as in existing in a certain place at a certain time, but also describes his place in the whole cosmos, existing outside of time. It also points to what Catholics call the second coming. When the old heaven and old earth will pass away, Christ will judge all of us. Hopefully not too harshly. And establish an endless kingdom, which 
although it sounds like a role-playing game where your friend never lets you play as the wizard, will be much cooler. And next, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. This section defines the Holy Spirit as part of the Trinity, that is, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that make up what Christians call God. The Holy Spirit is eternal, giving life, and inspiring the prophets to speak. Next, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The word Catholic here is lowercase, meaning universal. This part unites Catholics to other Christians in baptism and asserts that death is not the end. Catholics believe that after death, we will be able to have new life. In a world where there's no suffering. And finally, can I get an amen? Amen. Amen means yes. So be it or I believe. It's one way that we reaffirm everything that was just said. So that's it for the Nicene Creed. Now the Apostles' Creed expresses a similar faith with some theological nuances. It's shorter and doesn't address some of the key differences in the approaches of the Eastern and Western branches of Christianity at the time. But it does contain two things that the Nicene Creed doesn't. He descended into hell. This is taken from the first letter of Peter 3, 18 through 19, which says, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Catholics believe that Jesus' first priority was descending to hell to free the just that had gone before him. And also the communion of saints. This means that Catholics are not just united with other Christians now, but everybody that has come before us. Even my third grade class gerbil squiggly. That too. Mm -hmm. So while it might seem like we're robotically repeating words when we're saying the creed, keep in mind that we are affirming the essentials of our faith. Which have been hammered out in fierce debates over the years. And they can help us all really reflect on what we believe. For Catholic Central, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Let us know what stands out to you about the creeds in the comments below.